before I respond to the hardest question that I've, I've had in all my experience of the panel, of being a panelist, uh, let me uh, just add on what Dr. Kaita said. Um, he gave me a lot of credit, but uh, when we talked to PSF, when we were preparing the, the CDS grant, exactly he said as we, the conversation that we had, one of the questions was, do we have MSM in Rwanda? And it's a question I keep getting, even today. Even as we are discussing about preparing ICASA. So I want to tell you Tien, that uh, one of the things we, the project has really helped us to have is data. My background was really advocacy, going to parliament, talking to people, but we didn't have data. So this project has helped us to have data. And in the conversations we've been having, because you know ICASA, the way it's um, labeled, one of the conversations we are having at country level is that we're expecting some MSM. And that question keeps coming in all the conversations I've had, both informally or formally, to ask us, are you sure? Are they foreigners? Do we have Rwanda Mizuha MSM? And of course, I use the data from the project to say, yes, we have MSM. And I've had the privilege, of course, of meeting um, the community, both uh, MSM and sex workers. And, and, and being a physician, I remember uh, when Rwanda was reviewing the penal code, and Professor Tu said it very well, one of the things is really, uh, if you don't have the political, if you don't have the leadership, if you don't have leaders who take the position to say, let's have an enabling environment, it becomes very difficult even to have conversations. When Rwanda was reviewing the penal code, we were approached by two young women who were saying, Rwanda is going to put in place an article that would criminalize us. I was a physician and I said, who are you? Who, are, who is being criminalized? HD was working with sex workers, yes. But even being a doctor, I had never really paid attention to knowing that we have, uh, even the word sexual orientation, probably it had appeared in some of the, of the notes that I was seeing, but I had never given it attention. I had a conversation with these two women. They are from one of the organizations called HOKA, which is one of the oldest LGBT organizations in Rwanda. And they told me we are, we are women, and we have attraction to women. I was like, is this possible? And I was a doctor. So uh, the other thing that I've learned is we are ignorant. And if we don't allow ourselves, of course, to know, we'll keep in that ignorance. So even leaders, even doctors, even ministers of health, some of them have never had this. The first thing I did, and I always tell people that if there is a mistake I did, was to, to allow myself to go and listen to these stories. So I went to Nyamirambo. It's one of the neighborhoods of Kigali. Probably you should visit before you go back. We have... Uh, it's a very diverse community. I went to Nyamirambo and I met young boys and girls and they shared their stories. And then I decided that if there is a community to speak for without being shy, it's this community. And that's how we started, of course, engaging in parliament, writing to parliament, saying don't criminalize, meeting ministers, raising the voice, saying don't. And, and, and I want to encourage activists who are here that I know in some of our countries it's still difficult to have these conversations. But don't, do, don't, don't miss the opportunity when these issues come up. Engage with stakeholders. It's over time. I've seen the change in Rwanda over the last 10 years. It's very tremendous. I've, people have understood. But if we don't have conversations, we're going to keep thinking that in Africa we don't have MSM. Which is, but I, I understand as a physician that it's because generally issues of sexuality are a taboo. We never even discuss about heterosexuality. We never discuss about sex. We never discuss about anything. So every, every time it comes up, it's a new thing for us. So if we don't allow ourselves to open up and have these conversations, um, uh, we, we always miss the opportunity to, to push on some of these issues. And even before the law changes, when the policymakers understand and you have people who are courageous, uh, ministers who understand, you can start provision of services and you can be able to have data that you can use now to keep doing the incremental change. And I'm happy to, know, to note that Rwanda does not criminalize the same-sex relationship legally. Of course, I can't speak for the community, but, but society still, I, I don't know if I would use criminalizes. For society, it's still very complicated. But at least we can have conversations. I still can implement projects. I know what happened in Tanzania and, 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 and Uganda when, when things changed. But when you can implement, you can have data, you can use it to inform others, and the progress of all of us can get to know the information. Now, let me go to the question that has been asked. Um, whether the focus on youth 
is an opportunity to reach to keep operations or whether it is a distraction. And I must say again, it's a very difficult question. And my answer, I don't know if it's going to be helpful. It's both. My, my response is going to be both. And I'll explain. Uh, it, is, it can be a distraction if we want to close and don't dissect who are the youth. Because when we start talking about keep operations, sex workers are youth. And when we look at the disease burden, the prevalence among female sex workers is very high. I think over 40, 45 percent. When we talk to female sex workers, one of the reasons they give is uh, getting poverty, getting poor because they have had a child. So we come to the age group between 15 and 24. When you get a child in some of our families here, society is not tolerant. Some of the young girls are pushed out of their homes. Families reject them. They drop out of school. And the next thing, she has to start getting some income from the different clients. And before you realize, it's, uh, she's HIV positive. This is a real problem. We, we were trying to handle this. We we're trying to engage. But when you talk today, I mean, long time ago, uh, we have a place in, in, the, in one of the lakes in Rwanda. They used to say that if you get pregnant, they would take you and throw you there. When you talk to the young girls today, you can think it's not possible. But some of the young girls, you get pregnant, everything's over. Rwanda has a very good school, the entry program. We, we, girls, whether pregnant or not, they're supposed to continue school. But what happens at the ground, on the ground, is very different. You ask sex workers, all of them have had children. And they tell you that's the reason of, one of the reasons they became sex workers. Now, we need to focus on youth. And I see it as an opportunity, but we need to see... Who are these youth? We need to go into the youth who are young girls. We need to look at the youth who are key operations to ensure they have access to accurate information. That's where one of the other challenges we have. When you come to the young MSM, the education around sexual education is still very, very missing. One of the programs that Tejida is doing, we are doing CSC in the schools. And every time we are talking to young people, they ask us, is homosexuality normal? Now, I respond to that question. Even being an expert, I have the answer, but, you know, within the school environment, it's very difficult. Even in a country like Rwanda, which does not criminalize. You have teachers who are listening, and you're like, kids are asking you, we have a way, we, we encourage them to ask anonymous questions, and one of the things they keep asking is homosexuality, normal or abnormal. How do you respond to that? How do you start identifying young men who have sex with men within the school environment and give them the right education on, on, on safe sexual behaviors, on rubricants. So sometimes I tell my team, you have to keep seeing, eh? is the teacher there or the teacher is not there? Then you give the right answer. It's, it's not easy. And, and it's still a very big gap because within the school environment, it is still abnormal. It doesn't matter whether us who are here who are working in HIV, who are talking about um, friendly services, within the school environment, it is still abnormal. Young kids who are in schools are going to be told that they are abnormal. They are immoral. So it's, it's really very difficult. And I think if we go, if we look at youth as an opportunity, we need to go beyond and see how do we reach the youth who are most vulnerable. How do we find out the young, if you look at the sex work population, most of them are young girls. Of course, you know, the, the, the older they become, they, they leave it. Most of them are still very young. You need to engage them at an early age. Talk to them as youth. If you look at drug users, in Rwanda we don't have uh, data on injecting drug users, but there's some initiative to start looking at uh, who are they. And I know Kenya has, a lot of, uh, has done a lot of work on injecting drug users. But we're trying to look at who are those youth. Uh, I was very surprised at the beginning of this year we had just a, a quick assessment. We're looking at the drug, drug um, uh, we're looking at HIV prevention among drug users. But also um, to be sure we have drug users. Uh, the Rwandan law is very criminal. But I could tell you at our office in the morning, would have 10 people, 20 people. They don't even care about the, the law. They don't even know. They're in a state that they don't even understand. So we are getting an increased number of young people who are starting to use drugs, who are using drugs. We need to, if we're looking at the youth, how do we find out the young people? How would we look at the male sex workers? I'm talking about female sex workers, but also we are having a trend of uh, male sex workers that we are calling our fools in Rwanda. Yeah, those are male sex workers because they're also selling sex. Now, sex used to be uh, bought by men, but also men, women can now buy 
sex. And they are, they're equally vulnerable because they don't have the same, they're in the same vulnerability. They can't negotiate condom use. They can't negotiate safe sex uh, because they are vulnerable. So we're having, we're having male sex workers. Um, I, I've talked about young girls. So if, we, if, if, if um, the focus on youth comes as a way to ignore, not to go beyond and say, focus on youth. It's just like when you're talking about uh, condom use and contraception, and people tell you, focus on sexual reproductive health education. They are trying to avoid. So I want to stop there. If there are questions, I'll be happy to respond. But uh, thank you so much for inviting me on this panel.